Well, good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Now, for my story before we start today, uh, for those of you that know me outside of the beer blog and everything like that, you know we bought an older house because it was really easy to afford the payments and everything, and I can do a lot of the work here myself. Now, we had some water damage on the utility side of the basement because the guy that lived here before us had no idea what he was doing. He had the ease troughs draining directly on the side of the house and he had it like that for years. So all the uh, very bottom blocks have all their mortar out, right? So water comes right in whenever it rains and anything like that. So I spent most of the winter because I have lots of things on my plate purging the wall over there. Now I've purged all the wall except for like a five inch area it's really hard to get to. I'm going to get it purged, but it's just been really hard to get to that area, so there's no new hydraulic cement or anything in there. All the snow is melting right now, it's been raining all day, lots of water coming in, just in those five inches. So at least my purging has worked, I just need to finish it. And I should be doing that instead of a beer review, but you know what? I wanted a beer. So I got my Alexander Keith India Pale Ale pint glass here. And I got some Ruddles County Traditional English Ale. It is 4.7% alcohol. It is brewed and canned by the Ruddles Brewing, Westgate Street, Bury St. Ed Edmunds, Suffolk, England. So it's, it is brewed in England. It's the one pint, 500 milliliters. It says it has barley. It uh, shows a pregnant lady with an X through it. Uh, aluminum, so recyclable. Comes in a four pack for ten dollars and thirty five cents or some something like that. So it's not the most expensive beer, but it's not really all that cheap either. Uh, but at least it's four pints. Now see, I would have expected, because it's a traditional English pub ale, that it would have had a widget in there, but I'm just assuming things from, you know, paradigms of English pub ales. It's a nice color it's pouring, I'll give it that, but I really wanted a widget. So, it's basically a headless beer. It has a little bit of stuff at the top, but who really cares about that? It is mm, like a medium amber. It's just going from the orangish hue to the brown hue. I mean, down here it's really brownish, but an orangish, like an ambery brown. And as you go up, it gets deeper and deeper into the actual brown and less of the orange. So I'd say a medium amber, medium, like, light brown. Um, looking at it through through a light, like having the light hit it, it it's the orangish color. But when you hold it down here and the light isn't going through it, you have more of the brownish. So I'm, again, staying with the medium amber, medium brown. Interesting nose, uh, caramel and toffee, lots of hops, but the sweet of the caramel and the toffee outweigh that hoppy smell. And then, it's something like pine needles and a little bit of malt. Now the pine needles are coming out with the hops, so I mean, it's that like cedary hoppy scent, as well as the caramel and toffee malts. It tastes more like an IPA than a uh, pub ale. It doesn't have those fruity flavors. It doesn't have the caramel or, or toffee flavors. It's really mostly just hops. It is super soft, I'll give it that. 
but it's just it's not a pretty tasting beer. It's uh, very hoppy on the forefront and on the finish. Uh, the hops are just bitter as it crosses your tongue. Once you swallow it, that bitter turns into a cedary, piney feel. Very floral. Less bitter, but more floral. Uh, that stays in your mouth for about 30 seconds. Then it starts fading to like a uh, soft, dull, malty sweetness at the very, very finish of the beer. But I mean, I have to wait till I've gone through the bitter hops, and then the floral hops, and then the piney sensation. And after the pine, it fades to that dull, malty sensation. Really nice, really interesting way it works, but it's not really for me. Uh, again, it's not a bad beer. I'm... I mean, there's a lot of beers that I won't drink again, but they're fairly good beers. I mean, this is a fairly good beer. It's not a disgusting thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not really the taste for me. I am a guy that's coming into this liking English ales, but I just don't... It just doesn't work for me. Uh, I'd give it a... I'd probably give it a 4.5 out of 10. It's not because it's a bad beer. But because I would never buy it again myself, I wouldn't. I would drink it if a friend had it, and he or he brought it over or something. But I'll never spend my own money on it again. It was, it was a fun time while it lasted. I have one left in the fridge. I'll try and get rid of it when the guys are over on Tuesday night. But I mean, it's not bad. It's just not all that great either. Um. 4.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Beer drinking to y'all.